Have you ever wondered if it's possible to extend the range of your key fob by holding it up against your chin or your chest? Well, I've always wanted to know, so let's find out. So I've been at events before and I don't really always remember where I've left my car. And uh, part of the challenge is that my key, my car is a little old and my key fob's old and it doesn't always reach as far to the car as I want to. But of course, you know, how do you find your car? Well, you hit the, you know, the lock button and you hope you hear the beep off in the distance. Uh, and I heard once upon a time that if you hold it to your chin or to your chest, that for some reason your car is going to uh, possibly see it. And indeed, uh, it, I, it has worked for me, but I didn't know why. And I want to get into that. So what we want to do is first off, we want to find the signal. Uh, that is coming off of my key fob when I do it. So we're going to do a little bit of spectral searching. We're going to find the signal. We're going to try to get the information off of it. Now this is just the lock code uh, that we'll get. And so I'm just trying to hear the beep from my car. And then we're going to retransmit that. And we're going to see how far we can go with just uh, kind of just actually using my software to find radio as a tool by itself because my key fob is kind of unreliable but I do have the ability to use my software to find radio to transmit the same signal over and over again repeatedly. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and modify the waves coming off of it simply by touching the antenna or by actually putting our body closer to it. And we can actually look at the performance and we can see how far down the road we can get with uh, our system here. So first off, let's go ahead and uh, gonna set up a system where we're gonna go ahead and look at the spectrum about where my key fob's operating. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the button. And indeed, you can see bursts of energy start to come across the screen here. Every time I hit it, there we go. Once again, unreliable key fob. Uh, there we go, now it starts to come through. Uh, and so that indeed is the signal that's coming off of my key fob. And it turns out that when the signal transmits, it sends out about five individual bursts. Uh, now it's just basically turning a electromagnetic wave on and off really, really fast. You can see that we have a bunch of highs and lows that are associated with ones and zeros that are telling the car who I am and what I want to do. And in this case, we want to lock the car. Now we're gonna have to do a, a bit of a drive test. So stick with us and we'll be right back. All right. So we're down the road a little bit over 100 yards or so uh, with my mobile battle station comprised of uh, my child's car, plastic car toy, um, and my laptop, and the software to find radio. Now I'm going to just go ahead and run the exact same signal uh, that I was running before, and my car is all the way down there, and Jason's down there, and he's going to wave to me whenever he hears the car lock. Can you wave for us, Jason? All right, perfect. So right now I'm at a distance and a power level that's just above uh, just what's necessary for the car to be able to receive it. So I'm going to go ahead and run it right now. And there we go. You even probably heard a little honk that came through. So now I'm going to go ahead and decrease the power just a little bit to simulate me going further down the road, which we don't necessarily want to do at the moment. So let's go ahead and drop it down just a hair. And I'm going to go ahead and run it one more time and it shouldn't run. Now, this is a wireless experiment, lots of variables. Um, wireless is tricky enough as it is. So there's a chance it's still going to run, but so Jason did not wave this time. It's guaranteed that my signal is not making its way all to the car, all, the, all enough of the signal to the car as a strong enough signal. So what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to interact with that, that signal, the, the electromagnetic waves coming off of it. I'm gonna take basically a, a little simple dish and try to reflect those signals a little bit further that way, which should get us possibly just that extra distance, simulating us holding it up against our chin or our, um, or our chest. So let's go ahead and hold it up here. Gonna hit run code. And we didn't get anything that time. And once again, that's okay. There's a lot of things, even cars moving by, the signal will bounce off of that stuff. So we're talking about bouncing off of this and the signals are bouncing everywhere, which makes it really, really tough. But was that it there? Yeah, all right. So Jason gave us a wave. And that kind of tells me that indeed we were able to improve the signal strength of what we were transmitting here to make it go just a little bit further uh, beyond what it was before. So let's head back to the shop and talk a little more. Okay, so 
in this instance, what you're looking at is kind of the spectrum of my key fob on the left and the power versus time of my key fob on the right. And so each time I hit it, you can see a little bit of blip on both of them. You can practically see the ones and zeros to the right. But we want to look at what it looks like as we change orientation here. So now that we have the system set up to trigger, you can see some of these bursts. Actually, it's really even hard to see uh, that we have up this set up our system, but you can see a little bit of those signals, those bursts coming from my key fob coming through. But if I were to just simply hold the key fob up against my chest, you'll see a very big difference in the amount of power that's being transmitted just by my body being involved uh, with the process itself. So thanks for joining me as we look into, uh, can our body interact with the signal, say from a key fob, and extend the range of it? Uh, we did find out that, you know, basically if you interact with the signal in some way, shape, or form, if you're able to reflect it either with your head or a uh, reflective surface of any type, you have the ability to possibly cause a larger signal to reach the receiver, which means you can indeed get more distance out of it. Keep an eye out for the next video where we're gonna go ahead and dive into more details about the signals that we were acquiring, how we demodulated and remodulated the information and how we were able to actually evaluate what's the right shape and size even for our reflector. Now, in order to check out these next videos, be sure to subscribe so you can see when they come through. We'll go ahead and put products and information in the description below and we'll check you out at the next NI at home.